we wondered how the experts at Skinner define folk art. So this is a really folky piece of silkwork made by a girl in school. This came in today. Lord knows how many nor'easters this thing has endured. Folk art people love this sort of thing because it's colorful and it's in great condition too. Every day is a find in the revolving inventory of treasures here at the Skinner Auction Company's warehouse in Marlboro. Stephen Fletcher is executive vice president and heads the Americana department. People have asked that question for decades. What is folk art? And the folk art umbrella can encompass lots of things that aren't necessarily folk art, but they appeal to the folk art aesthetic. The carousel figures, for example, folk art collectors, some of them, if they've got the space, are very attracted to them. But they were, the vast majority of them, were made by big companies. It's not folk art, but it, it appeals to folk art enthusiasts. But if you were to ask me what is folk art, I think it tends to be uh, paintings, objects uh, that are made by people who might have had a limited exposure to, let's say, a teacher. Lack of formal training can still command a hefty price. Take this portrait of a young boy, Skinner estimated, at fifteen dollars to $25,000. That particular portrait was considered by folk enthusiasts to be a masterpiece. Handsome little kid, the loving dog, the bright painted Windsor chair. That picture brought uh, somewhere around $900,000. We've seen tremendous interest, developing interest in folk art. We've also seen the taste of folk art collectors uh, become more refined because they learn more. It changes before our eyes, literally from auction to auction. And object to object. This has survived in remarkably good shape. And on the back is a history of the piece. And that's the sort of thing that really gets people interested in folk art. It's a lovely object. I love stuff like this. Look up. Weather vanes are the folk art icons of New England. This Newburyport rooster or weathercock replaced the original now residing in the nearby Museum of Old Newbury. This is a very important piece to have. The artist who created it, Shem Drown, was the first documented weather vane maker in New England. Made circa 1721, this historic work topped two churches until 2013, when it was deemed too fragile for the elements, says Madison Vlass. So we were able to purchase it. It was a big deal for the museum. This is an incredible treasure to have. The replica was handcrafted in Groveland by Lee Weber. She and her husband Jonathan own New England Weather Vane Shop. It is labor-intensive work, yielding eye-catching copper creations, great and small, weather vanes with a lineage. What you have there is the sum total of, from 1852 today, of all the really interesting weather vane molds that are out there. Museum quality names such as E.G. Washburn. This is the same deer that was made in 1850 or 1860. It's the same process. It's the same copper, it's the same solder, it's the same tubing, and it's done the same way. The same deer seen in the Museum of Fine Arts. This is the father of all the deer, right here. The mold. They were made from this mold. How these historic treasures landed here is rooted in the Weber family antique business and this man, Ralph Raynard, whose persistent passion for weather vanes paid off. He went on a six-month road trip and didn't buy one. No one would sell him a weather vane. He said to my grandfather, let's take the, the antique ones you have in the shop down to MIT, which he was a student of, and we'll reverse engineer it and have our own molds make and we'll start making them. This original cow would have been in my grandfather's shop on E Street in Middleton, Mass. When Mr. Rain and I had no luck buying weather vanes, that's when he decided to reverse engineer them. Next, Raynard had an offer to buy out New York-based E.G. Washburn. Fast forward 60 years and Jonathan Weber buys the Washburn molds. He came home and said, do you want to do this? And well, we don't know how. That didn't stop Lee from learning. Today, she turns out weather vanes old and new, many custom designs. It's constantly changing what people want. Uh, we get a lot of people, I, I like the grasshopper at Faneuil Hall, and we actually have a mold. It's very similar, it's not the same, it's the same designer. We've had a request for a Louboutin shoe with a red sole, a 63 Corvette for a car dealer. But it is history 
that distinguishes these weather vanes. We really, really liked the history of it and seeing how far we could go with it. And when our hands are tired and done enough, and we'll sell it on and hopefully someone young will buy it and it'll keep the art going. I mean, you don't want to lose it. And we're told the only other collection of antique weather vane molds is in the Smithsonian. As for the Webbers, they have done their part as stewards and are looking for the next group or individual with a passion for weather vanes. They want the molds to continue to have a working life. Still to come, making space for creativity.